Hey, thanks for stopping by Cask and Q, where whiskey and barbecue meet. I'm your host, Justin Lloyd, and I have with me my good friend, Henry Turner. Hello. Henry has been kind enough and generous enough to bring by six different bottles of Blanton's. So we're starting a Blanton series. Henry, thanks for bringing by this bottle. This is the, uh, the label I was telling you about. It's green. Let her be on the horse. You got to have the horses, you know, all the, all the collectors, you know. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this one. So the first thing I got to say about Blanton's in general, this is probably the most marketable packaging of all time. When they created this thing, the uh, grenade look to it, all the different variations. You got to chase the letters if you want to have the whole set. You know, the, the fact that it's hard to find in general just for the base tan label Blanton's is always one thing. But this specific one, is an international release only. You may find it in Europe. I've seen some people say they found it in Australia, but you will not find this particular special uh, special reserve or special release here in uh, America. It's only gonna be over in the international markets. Well, that's some good information, Henry. Um, is it time to drink? I think it is. I think we need to pour <laughs> this and see what's going on inside this bottle. Like One of the things you wanna talk about here, and we'll come back to it later, is this is an 80 proof or 40 percent alcohol blend and so yeah. it's just a bit lower than your standard tan label you see around if you see it it's 93 proof so this will be a fun one to get into now is the green label uh, so this one is the is this the one that's in europe so you, you mentioned australia so yeah, like europe, international yeah europe and australia international we will be looking at some of those that are japan and the asian market only but this one is just a international europe and other markets outside of those particular markets okay. All right, let's take a look at the color of this whiskey. Really crisp, has almost like a clean look. I would call this a, uh, I don't know, maybe like a, a light copper. I don't know, maybe that's too dark. To me, because it's so thinned out, I'd say it's very much so in line with almost a scotch or an yeah. Irish. It's just a lot thinner because it's proofed down. Agreed. Well, let's go ahead and nose it, taste it, and talk about it. Viscosity, though. Wow, I didn't do that normal. You know, normally I do that, but uh, there's, that's a thick, it's, it's, that's, yeah. <laughs> for it being so thin, it's know, really man. coating the heck out of that it glass. It is, yeah. And then that nose. Ooh, I'm telling you, for for that's forty not, percent alcohol, that's got that's got some flavor jumping out of the glass there. So, do you know if this is a, is like? I mean, we'll get into the flavor profile and the nose and everything, but is it the same? Mash bill? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's got to be, just, right? To be it's just yeah. Blanton's, yeah. So it's still, I believe that's uh, mash bill number two uh, that comes from Buffalo Trace. I'm sure somebody's going to correct me. Come on. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's still just the same Blanton's yeah. mash bill that comes out of there. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, proofed down and released to a different market. Okay. And one of the things I'll talk about that being released to another market when there was the bourbon crash that happened, the international market actually supported the bourbon industry like in the 80s America. yeah yeah and so that's the reason why you see some of these specific releases that go over there it's just to show uh love and keep the relationship going because they support the market when americans were into clear spirits like gin and vodka yep i don't know why anybody won't drink those <laughs> not on this channel <laughs> man i'm getting uh you know for some reason i mean i have a bottle of blanton's over there and yeah. i have my collection with all the little horses mm -hmm. um i mean just the regular single barrel but mm -hmm. i don't know why but for some reason this smells a little different to me I, what is that i i wish i could tell you and i have done this vertical before and i will tell you some of the international releases just have a little bit different nose and once you even try it on the palate different palate profile than what you get here traditionally in america I don't know what that difference is, but I have picked it up before. I do know that on um, the American release, I always, always smell cinnamon, and I don't mm. smell any cinnamon on this. Yeah, you are. Hmm. I would say for me, this is like a, uh, a sugar baby. Yeah. Like a caramel, <laughs> sugar, <laughs> light, sweet, like a sugar baby. Yeah. Or sugar daddy, just that kid you used to have, and then you used to have when you was a yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good call. Right spot on. Yeah, I mean that's I, there's very little spice, real mild, mm -hmm. but it's good. Like I, you know, as I've gotten further in my whiskey journey, I've become a bit of a uh, foolproof kind of fan. You know, I've <laughs> tend to get to, used to that. We're getting to that later. Yeah. <laughs> 
we're shooting all these today. So as these videos are released each week, if you see that we act a little more and more and more stupid, well, me anyway. <laughs> Henry always has stuff together, and that's why. Yeah, I mean, I think I get some pears also, like, you know, fruit salad kind of thing. Do you get and it, it just get a little rickhouse off of this? Mm -hmm, I do. I like when say, you walk in and that breeze hits you. Yeah, and yeah. I wouldn't say it's like an older age statement of whiskey no or doubt anything about like it. that, but it's just like you get a little bit of that that uh, rickhouse off of there on mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready to drink this. Yeah, thing. I am too. Let's do it. All right. That's not regular. That's that doesn't taste like regular Blanton's. It's it's a little better. Light, sharp, sweet. A little bit of some spice going on there at the end, even at a lower proof. Let you know it's there. Yeah. Uh, the pears come to mind again. Uh, sweet pears and the the sugar baby daddy things, you know, uh, in the wrapper, the stick things that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. No cinnamon. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I always get cinnamon when I drink Blanton's straight or single barrel, just the regular stuff. This mm -hmm. has fruit salad to me um, with those cheap little chair, those little mm. maraschino or whatever they're called. Yeah. Yeah. To um, me, it, this is uh, the best way I can tell you is just the way it resonates to me. A youthful, cheap caramel candy you used to have as a kid. That's exactly what this is on the nose and on the palate. Not very complex. Mm. It does hang around a little bit longer than you would expect for an 80 proof. So honestly, whatever they did over there with this one is fantastic for being an international release. But this has got to be one of the better low proof whiskeys uh, or bourbons I've had. Mm, agreed. Mm. Uh, one of the things I would like to note is like you can really get your nose in there and, and like take a deep, you know, really drink it in, as Ron Burgundy would say. Uh, and it doesn't bother you. Like, I kind of like that. Mm. It doesn't, like, sends the nostrils. And, and even with this <clears> being <throat> a lower proof alcohol, I think it has so much flavor. Mm -hmm. If I was going to give this to somebody who was brand new to bourbon or rye, I think it still would kind of blow them away a little bit because this has got a lot of flavor going on in this this uh, particular pour. Man, it really does. And then just, I, you know, it's, you say it's not complex, and you're right. I mean, it's... But it's not one-dimensional either. It's mm -mm. somewhere in between. Um, but I like I like the viscosity of it. I like the smell. There's something there that I can't place. And I'm, as you've been talking, I've been thinking, man, what is that? What is that? But I can't I can't verbalize it. Um, it's good, whatever it is. There's caramel. I keep on wanting. To, I'm stopping short of saying butterscotch because I don't know if that's it. It's something almost creamy. I agree with you on that, and I really can't find out what that taste note is. Yeah. I'll have to come back to it later, but mm -hmm. that's all that I really got on this one because yeah. I was up here kind of going through it, and that's just really what hit me on the palate. Well, uh, I'm going to finish mine off. All right. The sugar baby, that's hilarious. <laughs> all right, so while we're up here and you're gonna, we're going to do our <laughs> scoring system, let's talk about the availability of this bottle. So we're talking Blanton's. You know, this is, and you're talking about international Blanton's. Uh -huh. And this bottle particularly was a dump date of uh, 21. So it's on the front side of the bottle. Oh, when you turn around, I saw but, 22. I didn't know what that yeah, was. Uh, that's uh, how many pours in the bottle. Oh, you're talking about that. Oh, the thing. glass, yeah. But, um, but yeah, you're talking about, you're not going to get this walking into a store, number one, just getting the base Blanton's. But you're going to have to know somebody who travels internationally. You're going to have to travel internationally, and you're going to have to get lucky to get it now. You find it over in Germany, France, England, you might find it for 60 or $65. You also paid for a flight to go over there, or your business did, and you also have to get it back, depending on how many you want to bring back. So I am not ashamed to say what I paid for this <clears> bottle. <throat> I paid $185 for this bottle. And I do it again because I wanted to get the vertical for Blanton's. For me, where I'm at in my whiskey journey, 
this was something that I was chasing that I wanted to actually obtain. So number one, I could share it with my friends and also uh, working on this channel, kind of being able to share it with everybody out there on YouTube. So for me, I'm not ashamed of the price and I think the price is pretty solid. That's not outrageous. I've mm -hmm. seen this bottle for a lot. <laughs> I've seen it on secondary before and yeah, I mean, it's five, six, seven hundred dollars anywhere in between there. I've seen it all, all through that range. So yeah, I would say you got a really good deal. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Yeah. And look here, this is all, and I'll talk about a little bit later, Every one of these bottles are pretty much relationship buys. I had to know somebody who knew someone was going over there yeah. or was getting one of these bottles and was able to mule it back. If you're gonna to look to get these things and get these type of bottles to add to your collection, it's definitely gonna be through a, a relationship or connection with somebody in the community. Yeah, that's great. I love that about our bourbon community community <laughs> here in central Arkansas. Um, I assume those folks that you met with mm -hmm. to get these bottles were from around here. Mm -hmm. um, well, man, uh, like you said, the scoring uh, criteria is availability, taste, and value. Zero to ten. Zero being terrible, ten being excellent. What do you got? So, availability on this thing is going to get what? Can we go negative two? <laughs> yeah. I think this was the hardest <clears throat> one for me to get. And I'll, oh, I'll say that with my journey. This yeah. was the green label, low proof was the one that I saw the least amount of. And even when I was asking my friends around, they couldn't find it. So, I'd say this one gets a zero on it. Now, yeah. Affordability, you know, the price on it, man, maybe a six. Unfortunately, it's still, it's good, but it's not groundbreaking when you get into this bottle. So you're paying up on it. And then, you know, flavor, everything you get in the bottle. Honestly, I put it pretty high. I probably put it at seven and a half, but I'd say this one's going to probably land right at about maybe a six for me altogether. Mm, it's a good take. Um, yeah, availability. I, it, it's gotta be a zero. I mean, you just can't get it uh, for you folks out there. And maybe there's somebody that watches this channel where this is plentiful, then maybe we should have a discussion. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but availability, zero. Uh, taste, I think it's really good. Um, I, I'd venture to say it's a seven and a half. Um, really like the way it just, it's kind of a playful whiskey. Um, I think it's good. Uh, value, you paid one, say 185. I mean, I really think that's freaking awesome because secondary on this thing, like I said, is way up there. Um, I'll go with seven and a half. I think aggregate, I, you know, I think it's solid, if, especially if it was more available than, you know, I'd, I'd probably bump it up to an eight. I really like the flavor on this one. It's different than, um, than the regular single barrel. So that's where I am with it. Um, anything else to add? No, that's all I got. Yeah, yeah, me too. So uh, if you don't mind, go ahead and like, subscribe, and smash that bell. It's the best way to support this channel. This is the first installment of our Blanton's series, and uh, we hope to see you around. Drink more Blanton's. <laughs> <laughs>